Hello, I'm Victoria Fritz in the business news this afternoon. Shares in TalkTalk fall sharply this morning after it warned its 4 million customers that personal details such as names, credit card and bank details may have been stolen. This is the third time that hackers have managed to breach TalkTalk cybersecurity to steal client data in a year. China's central bank has cut interest rates for the sixth time in a year in another attempt to jumpstart slowing growth in the country. The move comes a day after the European Central Bank also laid the groundwork for further monetary easing. And Twitter's boss and co-founder Jack Dorsey says he'll be giving a third of his shares to uh, his employees. The stock is worth about £130 million. It comes after he emailed staff last week to tell them that more than 300 of them would be losing their jobs. Now, in October, the UK summertime officially ends. The clocks go back and we revert to Greenwich Mean Time once again. The mornings get lighter and the evenings get darker. The time changes this weekend on Sunday at 2am, which means you'll have a shorter night if you're out in the town, but uh, an extra hour in bed on the Sunday morning. Uh, Money Supermarket is encouraging people to use the extra hour to switch energy supplier. Stephen Murray is in central London for us. Uh, Stephen, go on, make us feel guilty. What should we be doing in this extra hour? How much could we be saving? Well, the savings can be around about £277. The, the statistics that we've looked at show that for people who haven't switched their energy and are probably with one of the big six and haven't switched for a year or two, can be saving about £277. And what we've tried to do is look at that compared with what you could, else, you know, you could earn within an hour and shows that you, know, you could earn, on average, across the UK, about £15 in an hour, whereas you could switch and it'd take you five or six minutes and you can save £200, £300. And are there any other sort of benefits to the clocks changing back? I mean, there was a thought back in the day that actually this saves on energy consumption if, uh, if we wait until it's a bit lighter to get up. <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that. I think certainly, and we're certainly not, I don't think, suggesting that people set their alarms for 2am 2, 2 on Sunday morning and actually have to do that switch at that point. But I think from our perspective, you know, we... There's a lot of time when people say that I haven't got the time to switch energy and we're just trying to, trying to engage the public in something a little bit different to try and say, well, with that extra hour, look what you could actually save on something that you've probably been putting off for six months or a year. Mm. Uh, so people have got this extra hour, they could be switching, but how many people do you think realistically are going to do it? The switching levels are still quite low. Yes, they are, and I think it's, it's about engagement. And, you know, we're supporting this, this, uh, this Power Hour initiative, and at the moment the Department of Energy have also got their Power to Switch campaign. is trying to engage that portion of the public that the Ofgem and the Competition and Markets Authority have realised are not switching, and they're still staying with the big six suppliers. And so these savings, um, you know, average bills have come down significantly this year. People talk about rising prices. But on average at the moment, the cheapest bills to switch online are in around about the 800 to 850 pounds, which is significantly below those figures of 1,000, 1,200 pounds for those people that are paying for a standard tariff on the big six. So we urge people just to, whether they use it at 2 a.m. in the morning or whether they do it when they make their cup of tea on a Sunday morning when they get up, to have a look, come online and see what they can save. So do you think that sort of all the investigations that have gone when it comes to the energy market are doing the right thing? Do you think we're seeing a little bit more competition and better prices in the market? Absolutely. We've seen over the last year or two a big rise in what are referred to as independent supplies, the smaller supplies that have come on, on the market. And that's helping to drive prices down and, and, you know, increase the competition and put the pressure on the big six to do something different. So I think innovation, greater competition are all part of the market. And I think we as consumers need to take part in that by actually having a look around and shopping around to see what we can save. Uh, Stephen Murray, thank you. We appreciate your time. And I apologise you drove all the way from Nottingham to be with us. So we appreciate you coming in. Thank you thank very you. much. Let's have a quick look at some of the other stories around for you today. The extent of the crisis at Four Seasons, which is Britain's largest care home provider, is underscored today when it appointed advisers to carry out an emergency review of its finances. Uh, four Seasons has about uh, 22,000 beds in 470 homes across the country, and it's weighed down by interest payments of £50 million and debts of more than £500 million, which means that it's making less money than it needs to service its own bondholders. 
Now, a slowdown in global trade has forced AP Mollemesk, the world's biggest shipping uh, container company, to warn on its full-year profit, saying that they're going to be sharply below earlier expectations. The company is one of the most closely watched barometers of world trade due to its size, but also because many of its rivals are private, so it's very difficult to understand what's going on. Uh, the company says that the reason that rates have been dropping is because of a weakness in the Asia-Europe route, which is the shipping unit's most important trade lane. So very interesting, the timing of those comments, given what's going on with Britain and China at the moment. And the government is to offer up a package of £9 million to support workers and the local economy, hit by job losses in Scunthorpe, following, of course, the steel factory closure there. Uh, Tata is providing about £3 million, and the government about £6 million for startups and training. Let's have a look at the market. And European markets are on flying form today, surging to two-month highs. Investors seeing very positive news because of that interest cut in uh, Beijing. And also, uh, we had a little bit of news from the ECB as well yesterday, suggesting that there's going to be a little bit more stimulus in the economy in the months to come. And you can see Talk Talk shares have recovered somewhat. They're down about 1.5% at the moment, leaving the FTSE up 76 points. That's it for me. I'll have more a little bit later on. Thank you, Victoria. We'll see you a little bit later on.